Hi there, stampers and crafters. My name is Tammy White from stampwithtammy.com. And today, I'm gonna show you how to make what I think is one of the coolest cards ever, ever. This card is made with the Stampin' Up! Move Me bundle, the matching stamp set and dies, and they were created to make animated cards, almost like holograms, so cool. Today we'll be making a hummingbird card, but the set also has butterflies in it and flowers and some cool stuff. And you'll be surprised at how easy it is to make. And this is also my Stampin' Demonstrator Group's June blog hop. And there'll be some more amazing summer projects from my Stampin' Up! Demonstrator Group. And at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you how you can win a giveaway from us, the Stampin' Demonstrators, for participating in our blog hop. So you're gonna wanna pop on over to my blog after you watch this fun how-to video. Check out the blog hop tour and get yourself entered into the giveaway. You could win. All right, let's get started. And here it is again. So cool. And shockingly easy to make. For this project, we're gonna be using the Stampin' Up! You Move Me stamp set and coordinating Move Me Thinlets, which if you see them in the catalog, they may not look like much. It looks kind of cool. We've got a pretty butterfly, but when you see it in action, it is just phenomenal. It is so cool how they designed these to go together and made this louvered window to pull up the stamped image and make it look almost like a holograph effect. Very cool. These are both available separately or as a bundle and you can save 10% in my online store as well as a free PDF with all of the measurements that I'll be using on this card. You can download that free PDF on my blog at the link in the description of this video. To make this particular card, I used an eight and a half by 11 sheet of soft suede cardstock and I'm gonna cut it in half. So we have two card bases here. Next up, we're gonna score. Now we used this cutting blade, which is the dark blade on the stamp and trimmer. It also comes with a scoring blade, which is this lighter gray. I'll call it Sahara sand. I'm gonna score on the long side of the base at two and one eighth and six and a quarter. And when we reinforce those folds, it will fit together like so with just a slight overlap so we'll be able to adhere this together as a card base. For the next step, we're gonna do some stamping and I'm gonna use the Stampin' Up! grid paper, which is available in my online store. It's great because it has measurements on it um, and it also has these grid lines, which I find very handy for stamping the hummingbird. I've got some scrap old olive and the, the vanilla panel that we'll be stamping on for this. So we're gonna use some old olive ink with the old olive scrap for the leaves to stamp that image for cutting out in a minute. Almost forgot we need some Whisper White here for our flowers. For that, we're using Daffodil Delight. I've got a large and a small that we'll stamp one of each. And I'm just gonna put these two images aside while we stamp our hummingbird. The hummingbird I'm stamping in Fresh Fig. There are two different sections to him. So I'm going to stamp the solid image first and that's the, the, the hummingbird with the beak. I found it was especially helpful to do a couple of practice stamps with this image before doing it on the cardstock. And I wanted it to be straight across, which is where the, the grid paper really comes in handy for my practice. So I'm starting with the solid image and then I'm using this, the fresh fig for both but I'm gonna stamp off the inner part once so it's a shade lighter. And then I'm gonna line it up and the trick here I found, if, if you can see here, when I move, I wanna just line it up so you can't see any of the lines that we just stamped and that means that we won't stamp over them. Stamp it down and we have a perfect image. Now we're ready to put that image on our paper. It, it took me a couple of times on the scrap paper till I got it just right. 
It doesn't line up exactly perfectly and that's okay. No one is gonna notice. Not even you when you get, start playing with it. So again, we're gonna ink up the solid image, which is the long beak first, put it right in the middle. Try to get that straight as possible. And then same color for the inside. Gonna stamp off once on the scrap paper. Line it up and stamp. So it may not come out exactly perfect, but it is totally fine. All right, I did attach our um, wood texture piece do this side today to the um, card base before doing our big shot work so we can cut them together I'm using the wood texture designer paper stack for this so any of these wood textures go awesome with this particular one you can check out all of the new Stampin Up designer series paper on the Stampin Scoop show episode 36 that Linda and I just did on Tuesday all kinds of beautiful new papers and again the measurements are on the free PDF on my blog. So I'm taking some snail adhesive to attach this designer paper to the card base. Now there were several different ways I've seen um, to, to do this louvered window. I particularly loved having it layered on top. So what I did was cut out below with the largest layering square from the squ layering square dies. And we'll start by cutting that panel out of the front. So to do that, I've got the Big Shot die cut machine, magnetic platform, one cutting pad, and our panel. Line that die up right in the middle where we want it. And while we're cutting this, we can also cut the little thumb notch out of the top. And that comes from this little piece in the die set. That just sits right on there. Another way to um, cut this notch is to use the um, one and three eighths inch circle punch. <laughs> There's a ghost on my big shot machine, so I'm gonna use a little, <laughs> the, the little notch just does not wanna stay put, so I'm just using a posty note to stick them in place. That's also a great way to line up your dies if you don't have the magnetic platform. So we're gonna put one cutting pad on top and crank that through the big shot. Then when we come out, we've got our notched top and our window. Now just a note, you don't have to, If you, you can also cut the louver right out of your card base. Um, you don't have to layer on top. I just liked the look of it layering on top. Okay, next up on the big shot, I've got a three inch by three and three quarter of soft suede for our louver. And then we're gonna punch out our flower scraps. And those use the flower dies. And we're also going to have a little scrap of pumpkin pie here for the inside of the flowers. So when we're done, all of our dies can go through on one shot. They're gonna look just like this. We're gonna place one cutting pad on top and crank it through. On the little flower centers, I found that it did help to use the paper piercer to poke out the centers. Just poke those little holes in the die. Now for the louvered window, the die brush was the way to go. So I'm really just going to run over that one with the die brush, pop out those louvers. Okay, now we have all of our pieces cut and ready for some assembly. I'm going to start with some mini glue dots and we'll attach the flower pieces. To use the mini glue dots, simply just stick your panel directly to the dot and then tuck in any pieces that might show, tuck in any panty lines and stick it down. The leaves are going to go down here on the front and then I'll use some Stampin' Dimensionals to stick the, the flowers down.
Actually, you know what? Let's put the louver on before we do that because they're going to overlap it. So, a little silicone mat in the back here for any overage and just take some snail on the edge of this. Make sure it doesn't go overlap into the louver area. And we are only overlapping on the edge. And the silicone mat also in my online store is great for catching that over lap of, of adhesive so it doesn't make a mess on your workstation. Just line that up over our window. It's already looking awesome. We haven't even put the hummingbird in yet. Okay, so for the back, I'm going to take some tear tape adhesive because this is strong or you could use fast fuse if you're a fast fuse fan on the very edge again on the very edge here we don't have a ton of overhang on this card peel off that protective backing and seal the card And then when we slide our hummingbird in, he flies. <laughs> it, was that, it was so easy, wasn't it? I mean, it really was so much easier than you thought it was going to be. I find it looks the best if you pull it up and down slowly as opposed to fast, although he does fly fast. <laughs> He's animated. It's so cool. I also um, put a little tiny bit of the sticky strip down the bottom here to keep the bottom closed. So that way the, the inner panel didn't fall out of the bottom. This fits in a regular Stampin' Up! medium sized envelope. It's the regular standard size card. I, I've designed it to be a regular standard size card. And then I finished it off with some glimmer dots. Now the first one I used some of the um, used some of the Razzleberry glimmer dots. So this time let's go with, let's, let's do the yellow. I think these are Daffodil Delight. Just a few random sizes. So pretty. And our card is complete. We have a completely animated flying hummingbird. <laughs> have lots of fun with this Move Me bundle. It's available in my online store. There's a free PDF on my stampwithtammy.com blog, and you can get to it simply by clicking on the link in this video's description. You can wow your friends and family with this one. Now stay tuned. Let's hear about that giveaway. So our Stamp It Demonstrator group giveaway for our blog hop is this brand new Pieces and Patterns stamp set. It's such a fun stamp set. And this is a blog comment entry. So to be entered to win, you'll need to pop on over to my blog and leave a comment with the hashtag Stamp It Contest. And be sure to do it exact because we do search on those terms to pull out your comments. Don't make any spaces or change the wording to be entered. And the great thing about this is you can be entered multiple times by leaving a comment on each of the blogs in the hop. One comment per blog per person will be entered. And you get all these fabulous summer ideas. All right, hop on over to my blog by clicking on the link in this video's description and you can get started on tour and entering the giveaway. Thanks for joining me today.